the machines of flight. Each began as an idea, a dream, a picture in the mind. For the picture to become real, ideas must take shape as concepts, which can be tested and verified. This is Langley, where dreams become reality. Once an historic plantation, and now NASA's Langley Research Center, this is where engineers solve the problems of flight, where lessons of the past provide solutions for the future, where pictures in the mind become the aircraft and spacecraft of tomorrow. They were dreamers, too. In December 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright were building a machine in the hopes it would fly. It did, at a speed of just over seven miles an hour. At first, the world took little notice. The Wrights were persistent. They demonstrated that their flyer had command of the air. European military planners paid attention. On the eve of the Great War, Europe's combatants counted thousands of military aircraft. The U.S. had 23. Armed combat quickened the pulse of technology. In 1914, trouble in the Balkans flared into the bloodbath of World War I. Flying machines were produced in great number, although these early airplanes were dangerous to fly. The war spurred America to action. In 1915, Congress created the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. What World War I did was take aviation out of the hands of the tinkerers and the sportsmen uh, and really created an industry for the first time, um, created an infra infrastructure for uh, American aviation. And the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or the NACA, was a vital, proved to be a vital cog in that infrastructure. The NACA established a research laboratory on the Virginia Peninsula near Hampton. Built on the site of George Wythe's plantation, this new lab was named for Samuel Pierpont Langley, a pioneer of manned flight. The young, untried staff of the new Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory began work on its first wind tunnel. The wind tunnel is the fundamental tool for understanding flight. It's an enclosed passageway in which air is driven through a test section where a model or part is mounted for testing. How the model behaves in the onrushing air is measured using precision instruments. Because the first and second generation of, of Langley uh, researchers were so young and inexperienced, they just did not know that there were lots of things that couldn't be done. So they went ahead and did them anyway. That sort of enthusiasm and drive was needed to conquer the early problems of flight. There was much to learn. As Langley's engineers compared their wind tunnel data to that from flight tests, they noted a nagging difference. The difference was one of scale effects. Wind tunnels of the day operated at normal air pressure. An airflow parameter, called the Reynolds number, was too low on the tunnel tests with the scale models. In June of 1921, Langley's Max Monk proposed building a wind tunnel in which air pressures could be varied. In 1922, Langley drew upon Newport News Shipbuilding's boilerplate expertise to build the pressure vessel for the variable density tunnel. Researchers could pressurize air up to 20 atmospheres while measuring its flow over small models to minimize the problems of scale effects. It 